Hello coders and welcome to episode 1.3 of our Google Apps Group course. Today we're going to be talking about getting a range and values of a sheet. So four of the top methods to do this are get range, get values, get sheet values, and get data range. Let's dive into the code and have a look. So I've cleaned up our code a bit from our last video. I've taken the ID of our spreadsheet that we're interested in and stored it in a constant called ID. And then I use that ID to open the spreadsheet that we want and store that in a constant called spreadsheet. And then using that spreadsheet, I am getting the name of the sheet that I want, which is called Detroit, and storing that in a constant called sheet Detroit. So the first method that we're going to look at is get range. So I'm going to create a variable, call it range. And then I'm going to type sheet Detroit, which is the sheet that we're interested in. And then I'm going to start typing get range. So as you can see, there's four different methods that we can use. I'll start with, they all say get range. Um, I'm going to use this third method uh, because I think it's the easiest actually. So what get range is, is it's taking a subset of the sheet that you want. So is if you just are interested in like this data, for instance, on row two, what you can do is you can get this range per se. You can get from A2 to D2 and then just store it in a variable called range. So that's what we're going to do. So the first one, the, the first two arguments, row and column, that's what is the top left hand most cell of your range. So if we go back here, we can see that it starts in row two and starts in column A, but that is column one. So row two, column one. Number of rows, well, our data is only one row long, so let's just say one row. And number of columns, well, we can see that we have one, two, three, four columns here. So let's say four for that. Put a semicolon and just run it just to make sure that it runs. And it does. Okay, so good. So now we have the range. So what can we do with the range? Well, the range just gives us basically a boundary of, of you know, the data that we're interested in. It doesn't actually give us the values itself. So that's where get values come in. So if we do range dot get value. So there's actually two methods. There's get value and then there's get values. I almost always use get values and I'll show you why. So get values. Okay, so let's just logger log this out. And just to show you what the other with what um what get values does, I'm going to log that as well. So what get value is going to do is it's just going to take the top um left hand top top left hand most cell. So basically it's as if you didn't include these last two arguments. You're just getting row two, column one. So we'll see that when we run it. So we ran it, ran successfully. Let's go to logs. So as you can see, it's just getting the top left hand most cell, which is the value of that, which is Matt Patricia. And then if you get all the values, then it's going to take all of the data that is in our range. So that's pretty cool, actually. I kind of like that. So we'll hit that, we'll comment this out. I'm going to save this one just because I want to show you something in our next method, and that is get sheet values. So the, the way that we just did it is first we access the range, and then we access the values. So that's kind of like a two-step way of doing things, and you can actually do it in just one step. So I'm going to say sheet Detroit Let's see, Detroit, and then I'm going to start typing get sheet, there it is, get sheet values. And what this is, is it's basically the same arguments, it's the start row, start column, number of rows, number of columns. So I'm just going to actually copy this data, these arguments, put it in there, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this in a logger log, so that we can see that these, so if this works right, then both of these should have the same output. So that's save, run, ran successfully, let's go to logs, and then you can see this is the exact same output. So that's just a quicker way of doing things. And I, I almost always do it this way, 
Um, I guess if you wanted more data from that range and not just the value, say maybe the format, you would have to do it this way. But this is just a quick and easy way to do that. So the last method that we're going to cover before I close out this video is get data range. So sometimes, you know, you're not just interested in a subset. You're actually interested in everything, all of the data that's on a sheet. And you could, you know, make your range equal to, you know, you could figure these out and, and make it equal to everything. But there's actually a simpler way to do that. What I'm going to type in now is sheet Detroit dot get data range. So get data range is going to return us a range. So then as we found out here, you need a range, but then you also need to get the values from that range. So let's just log or log this out. And what this should return is all of the data that's on that sheet. So there's no boundaries for you know certain subsets of that range. So let's save that and yeah, I guess we can keep these two logs. Let's run it. And there we go. So let's let's look at our logs. So again, these first two are the same. And then this second one, this is our get data range. So now it's taking all the data, including our headers. So that's the name, location, job title, reason for leaving in one array. And then the next array in, in, this, in this array. So this is a 2D array, what they call it. It's an array in an array. And then our second argument here is, is Matt Patricia, Detroit, head coach, can't win a game. So again, that's exactly all of the data that we have in this sheet currently. So that's what get data range does. All right, guys, I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions, just please comment below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.